much better. Tayo manalangin po. Okay, thank you. Banal naming Panginoon, kami po nandito muli sa iyong harapan, sa iyong trono upang minsan pa ay magbigay ng kapuri sa inyo at minsan pa, Panginoon, kayo bigyan namin ng kasalamatan at itaas ka namin sa aming buhay sa oras na ito, Panginoon. Lord, itinataas po namin ang aming gawain sa oras na ito na nawa, Panginoon, ay malugot, malugot ka at maging katanggap-tanggap, Panginoon, ang aming mga gagawing uh, pagpupuri sa iyo, sa aming pag-aawitan, sa aming pagkikinig sa iyong salita, na wapo Panginoon ay, ay uh, matanggap mo ang aming, uh, aming gagawin ngayong hapon. But uh, before this, Lord, hinihingi po namin Panginoon ng kapatawaraan ano man ang pagkukulang namin sa iyo. Linisin mo kami minsan pa Panginoon upang maging karapat dapat po kami sa inyong harapan. Lord, Uh, dalahin po namin ano man po Panginoon yung mga hindrance sa aming paligid Lord na hindi kami makapakinig sa inyo at hindi namin magawa ang pagpupuri sa inyo Lord dalangin po namin na ikas out mo lahat ano man ang hindi magandang uh, uh, nasa paligid namin mga gawa ng kaaway mga plano niya Panginoon upang hindi kami Uh, hindi mo kami ma-bless sa hapon ito. We pray, Father God, na cover us with your most precious blood, O God, that we can truly praise you and we can truly worship you this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, O God, and we give you back all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Isahin po natin ang ating proclamation sa hapon ito uh, sa mga taga Filipos. 1 verses 6, sabay-sabay po natin basahin, na ako'y may lubos na pagkakatiwala sa bawi na ito, na ang nagpasimula sa inyo ang mabuting gawa ay lulubusin hanggang sa araw ni Heso Kristo. In English, Philippians 1.6, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ay umawit kay Jesus ng may galak.
Hallelujah. You shall love the Lord with all your heart. You shall love the Lord with all your soul. We shall love the Lord with all your mind. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Lord, I love you with all the things you are. Lord, I love you for all the things you do. Lord, I love you. Ang Diyos ay bumangon mula sa lahat ng ating 
bansa. Amen. Pag-pray natin. Hallelujah. Lord, sa hapong ito, ginadalangin po namin na ikaw mong siyang patuloy na bangunan tumigta sa bawat bansa. O Lord, wala mo kami panagawa, Panginoon, kung hindi ka mong siyang pumilos, Lord, ang iyong mga pangyarihang kapay, ang iyong espirito, ang siyang bangunan, tumilos, Panginoon, sa bawat isa sa amin, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Malalang tayo ng kanyang liwanag at ang kanyang kanwalatian ang siyang bulubitaw sa ating lahat ng mga bansa. Amen? Mga pangang siyang ang nagpanalangin ang siyang may kapangyarihan na siyang gumapay sa bawat isa sa alin. Kaya panalangin natin o ka sa araw na to, malalangin kayo mga patay mga kapatid. Lord, sa oras na to, Panginoon, ang iyong liwanag ang siyang kumilo sa kalwa natin ng bawat isa sa amin at sa buong mundo, Panginoon. Lord, ikaw ang siyang kumilo sa
Itinataas mo namin ang aming gawain sa iyong pangalan, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Let God bless with every one of us continually. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Pwede uh, i-welcome niyo ang, ang katabi niyo? I-welcome niyo ang katabi niyo? Amen. Walang, walang bago sa atin, so you are all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. At wala rin bagong announcement, but uh, i-review ko lang, no, i-ulitin ko lang yung mga announcement natin. May Bible study tayo tuwing bir, uh, uh, web, uh, Merkules at saka Friday Vigil tuwing uh, Friday. Amen. At daily Bible reading. Amen. Via Zoom lahat ito. Amen. Praise God. So now sa April 16, may meron tayong second anniversary. Amen. Happy ba kayo? Excited ba kayo? Ipalakpak ang kamay sa Panginoon. Amen. April 16, second anniversary of Agape Love Parish. And we would like you to go out and invite people. Amen? Amen. Go out. Any, anyone, any races. Kahit anong rasa. Amen? Chinese man, African man, Pakistan man, uh, ano pa ba? Ano pa mga rasa? Ibang rasa? Russian? <laughs> no? And lahat ng rasa. Invite them. Amen? Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Ngayon, uh, sa, April 5, sa April 5, statutory holiday ito, no? Yung lahat ng uh, participants, no? Sa pag, uh, coming anniversary, please, we will come together here. Our assemble, assemble time here in Joy Center, no? For the practice. Practice para sa April 16 na yun, sa anniversary. Kung involved ko sa drama, kung involved ko sa singing, dancing, at kung ano pa, please come on April 5. Public holiday yon, holiday natin yon. And may the Lord bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, another announcement, I will announce an ahead, no? Para maging ready na rin kayo sa June 22, holiday natin yon. Statutory holiday natin yon. Uh, this is our second time I think third, no? Kasi yung June last week, last year, we went outing. And the second outing is October, if you remember. No, then this time, we will be third, third, third time. Amen? So June 22, we will have outing. Agapi La Paris, no? All Agapi La Paris. Not only that, invite your friends. Invite people. People that you will meet. Invite them to join with us. Amen? Hallelujah. We will band together, no banding together. That is in June 22. Advance announcement lang yan para maging ready tayo ngayon, no? Pa, pag, uh, Pag-ipunan nyo na yung pamasahe. Siguro yung, yung 50, okay na yun, pamasahe. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will announce that when we when we confirm the, the day. Oh, we, we confirm the place, amen? So we will announce you, uh, we will update you where where we will go on that day. Amen. Praise the Lord. So remember that day, June 22. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I think that's all for now. And, uh, testimony. Testimony time. This is time. Uh, glory to God. Uh, I thank God na hindi ako pinapabayaan ng mahal natin Panginoon, lagi niya akong ginigising. Kahit na naantok na ako sa work ko, but the presence of the Lord is with me. So, glory to God. Uh, Ititistify ko ang mga alaga ko na darawang batang makukulit, but 
yung pinakamalit na bunso is is coming to be a uh, two years old. Pag two years old itong by June. But is uh, really na napakalikot niya talaga grabe. Uh, Wednesday last week, uh, the time is about uh, 1 p.m. and I suddenly so very sleepy. And then, hindi ko na malayan na nakatulog na ako. But, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, yung ginising ako talaga ni Lord, ginising ako talaga na bakit nasa, na, 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 namulat yung mata ko, I open my eyes, is, no, suddenly no more the, 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 the baby boy on, on the bed. Nasaan na yung alaga ko? Nung pagganyan ko yung kortina, nakasalap, nakasampay na yung paa niya sa pintana. In Jesus name. Hinila ko, hinila ko yung paa ng alaga ko. Naka, nakadiin na talaga kasi ang, ang bukas ng, bin, ng bintana is ganyan. Eh, sa pagkasakit, ay yung sakit yung bata, ubo-ubuhin, pumayat siya. So, na, na malayan ko na na nandoon yung katawan niya at saka yung paa niya. Yung ulo-ulo niya lang hindi niya may asong dahil yung ulo niya bilog. So I said, Lord! Sabi kong ganun, Lord, umiyak ako talaga sa kama sa kwarto nila. Lord, kung pangamatay mo na nalaga ko, siguro ako na rin. But the presence of the Lord can save me. Kaya ba, yung presensya ni Lord, hindi niya ako pinabayaan at saka talaga, grabe talaga yun. Iniyak ko talaga, nalis ang linggo talaga yung niyak ko. Kaya ngayon, Yung puso ko ayaw ko nang matulog, kung maaari ayaw matulog, pero naantok pa rin ako. Naantok pa rin ako, but ay takot na ako talaga, kaya nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon, God is with me. Thank you po. Amen. Meron pa magpapatotoo? Well, okay, let's pray for the testimony for our sister. Panginoon, salamat sa testimony ng iyong anak. Lord, continue to help her, Lord, na maging watchful siya, Panginoon, maging active, maging sober, Lord, sa kanyang binabantayang alaga, Panginoon. And we pray for the boys, O oh God, that they will have the mind or behaving to stay, not to uh, do the things that uh, leads them into danger. Father, we pray that cover the boys with your blood, the precious blood of Jesus. And for your daughter, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen her the more. Na bigyan mo siya ng lakas pa ng Panginoon dahil hindi na siya nakakatulog sa pagbantay ng alagin niya. But Lord, you extend the strength upon her so that she may have the strength to take good care of the boys and even do the, the works in the house in Jesus' name. Father, salamat at pinabalik namin ang pasalamat sa iyo sa pangalan ng Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, um, offering time. Blessing time. Offering time, let us stand. Tatayo po tayong lahat ng bigay para sa Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Meron na mong mabasahin, no? Uh, Kumon na ito, pero yung Malakay 310 sa Tagalog, mabasahin ko siya. <laughs> Wait lang, Malakay 310 sa Tagalog. Praise the Lord. Please get ready for your offering. Amen. Malakay 3.10 Ang sabi niya dito is uh, Pero ngayon, hinahamon ko kayo ay masubukan ninyo ako. Ang Panginoong makapangyarihan Subukan ninyo ako ang Panginoong makapangyarihan. Dalhin ninyo ng buo ang inyong mga ikapo sa bodega ng templo upang may pagkain sa ating sa aking templo. Amen? Kapag ginawa ninyo ito, padadalahan mo kayo ng ulan at ibubuhos ko ang sobra-sobrang pagpapapala. Amen? Praise the Lord. So if, uh, kung sino man ang nakaka-engine ng tights, no? Uh, please, eh, you can give your tights here. And uh, and your offering, prepare your offering. Amen. Amen. All right. So let us all stand and and uh, as we give offering unto the Lord, we will sing and we will dance. Amen. I know He rescued my soul. His blood cover my sins. I Oh, my Lord, 
Please be seated.
sent to the Lord. We are asking to touch us tonight. Tell us, I believe the Lord is going to touch us in a mighty way. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father.
trusting God for a touch tonight. Amen. 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 Is there anyone in any financial challenge and you are trusting God for a breakthrough? Amen. 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 I don't know, I'm just sensing that God wants to do something miraculous. Amen. When he leads me, I do it. If he doesn't leave me, I forget about it. Please, let's stand up. Just want to raise come out. I said someone is in a situation we need divine intervention this week. Maybe you need it. Maybe there is a pain, you need healing, or you are going through financial struggle, or you have an issue with the immigration. Lord is, I believe God wants me to pray for that person. Anybody? Study. Healing? Okay, please come out. Anybody asking God for financial breakthrough? Please, please, sir, if he doesn't ask me, I don't do it. So, just if he asks me to do it, I just do it. And I will see she will have this thing. Not spiritual, spiritual enlargement. No, I, I want something. It's okay. I want to let go. Okay. Any other person? Ma Mami Lori. Healing. Healing. Please come. I just do what he asked me to do. If he hasn't sent me to do I don't do it. So. Amen. Amen. If you are trusting God for healing, come to this left hand side. Come here. Amen. 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 So, uh, is, uh, did my soul, uh, soul also ask for healing? Holy Spirit, try healing. Please face the altar. Face the altar. Healing and family matters. Is there anybody here who has never given birth before? Yeah. Who has not had a child before? Your own biological child. You? <laughs> then God wants me to pray for you. Mr. G. Yeah, it's not yet married, no? When you marry, you will not have the day. Everything the enemies have planned to shut your womb will be destroyed now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our holy hands to our cause. Sing you, blessed be the name. Thank 
Jesus, Lord, I pray for your people that your mighty hand of power, Holy Spirit, will come down right now and destroy every chain of darkness, break every yoke, use sickness in anybody's body here. I command you in the name of Jesus, I bind and cast you out because it is written, it was wounded for our transgressions. It was bruised our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Father, I release your healing power upon our body, soul, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the sickness in your body, soul, and spirit. I rebuke the infirmity in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I decree no more will your body be used 
for evil loans. Let your dream be refreshed in the name of Jesus. Close your eyes. Please close your eyes. So that you can comment. Don't look at me. It's not about me, it's about him. If you look at me, you may not get what he wants you to get. But if you look at me, you will get everything. Lord Jesus, let your anointing move and go through everyone. I decree you free in the name of Jesus. I command that power that is troubling your spirit to die in the name of Jesus. I command that problem judged in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Pick a song of praise and go back to your seat. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Pick a song of praise and go back to your seat. Uh, go back to your seat. God bless you. When you sleep, you will see the difference. Amen. Amen. Tonight, Holy Spirit, I thank you for your word. You just want us to share the word, and God has obeyed you and done what you wanted to do. And I give you all the glory. And let the people say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As the Lord leads us, we will, when he leads me like this, I just will be, and he does what he wants to do. Now, we will be looking at a topic, very important, and it is a question. Please, take your seat. God bless you. In Luke chapter 9, verse 57 to 62, Luke 9, 57 to 62, this message is titled, Who Will Follow Jesus? Who will follow Jesus? As simple as it sounds, it's very important. Or let me say, who will follow Jesus to the end? The reason why I ask this question is because, is because many people will want to follow Jesus, but not everyone will choose to follow him to the end of their lives. And so the question God is asking me to ask everyone here tonight is a personal question. Now, this question, only you can answer it. Your friend cannot answer for you. Yes, even if you have a twin sister or a twin brother, he or she cannot answer for you. Only you can respond to this question. Who will follow Jesus to the end of their lives? In Luke chapter 9, from verse 57 to 62, we see about three to four cases. I'm going to read from here. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man, somebody say a certain man, certain man. said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with that soever thou quest. Can we read it together? I want to go. And, and it came to pass that as, as they went in the way, a certain, certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with that so ever thou goest. We stop. This is a decision of this man. And I think that, I just believe that everyone here is like this man. All of us have said this thing. Is there anybody here who does not want to follow Jesus? Amen? Yeah. Almost every Christian has told Jesus, I want to follow you to the end of my life with that wherever you go. This is fantastic. But you see, <laughs> to say something is one thing, and to actually stay by that decision when challenges come is another thing. Let's see what happened to this man. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man asked not where to lay his head. In other words, Jesus is not saying here, you know, I was in a gathering some years ago. This should be 2009 or 2010. And a prophet, because I believe he's a prophet by calling, he was asking the question. He said, when he read this place, a friend told him to read this place. And when he read it, he said he didn't know what Jesus was talking about. He said, look, the man was saying, even your Jesus is homeless. He didn't have a house. How can he help you? Because here Jesus said, foxes have holes and the birds have nests. I, the son of man, I don't have where to lay my head. 
So he was not asking. He said, is Jesus saying he is homeless? That he doesn't have a home? But before that day, about two, three weeks or months before, the Holy Spirit already taught me the scripture. And this is what he said to me. He said, when Jesus was telling that man that he does not have where to lay his head, he was not saying that he does not have a house. He said, at this time, Jesus was moving from place to place, preaching from place to place. Let's say, for instance, this week, Jesus is in Hong Kong. Let's say, he's, uh, what's the name of this place? Is in uh, Jordan, Hong Kong. And he's going to live here for, let's say, 30 days or one week he will spend there. Then next week, he will go to Sham Shippo. He will stay there for another one week. And the following week, he will go to Yulong and stay there for another one week in the hotel. And then the following week, he will stay in, uh, uh, what's it called now? Uh -huh. Then the next day, he will go to mainland China. Then the next day, he will go to Taiwan. Then the next day, he will go to Japan. Then the next day, he will go to Jamaica. Then the next day, he will go to Australia. And you, you have a wife. Can you follow me like this? Praise God. That was the situation. So he was telling the man, look, I don't have, it's not as if you come together and sit down with me and then we we'll eat. I don't have where to lay my head. I move from place to place preaching the gospel. Can you pay the price of going with me like this? And please, sometimes we will sleep in the, under the open air. Sometimes we will look for a mountain to sleep because we don't have a house to sleep. I don't have cash to rent a hotel. You know the Bible said Jesus became poor for our sake. So if I don't have money to rent a hotel, so we are going to sleep in the park. When we get to Macau and uh, there is no money for a hotel, can you sleep on the streets? The man thinks, huh? what kind of life is this? I can't. And the man turned back. That's what he's saying. Look at the next verse. We never read that the man followed him. That one disappeared. Everybody said disappear. So what is he saying? If you are going to follow Jesus, there are conditions to follow him. You must be ready to pay the price. Whatever is going to cost you to follow Jesus, there must be no other God or other solution elsewhere. By the time you make Jesus a second option, then you are not truly a disciple of Jesus. Okay, I will come to church for five years. Maybe I will have money to build a house in the Philippines. And if I serve Jesus for five years and I cannot build a house in the Philippines, I will go and do gambu. Amen? <laughs> Some people can say that. I will go and do gambu. I will go to Macau. I will go and play gambu, gambu, gambu. Casino. I will go and do casino. Maybe I will make money. That kind of person is not what? It's not a follower. It's not a disciple. So we have case number one. The man said, I will follow you wherever you go. You just say, hey, can you sleep on the open heaven and it will be raining on your head? Say, hey? Um, he said, yes. Sometimes I move from Shem I go to Yulong, and in Yulong, we sleep in the forest, and mosquitoes bite us. Can you and just, ah, mosquito, oh, no, I cannot. That one went away. But Jesus, that man is sleeping. <laughs> Amen. But Jesus saw another person. Everybody look here. Please look here. And he said to another, you, follow me. But he said, you see how the Bible introduced it, but this second person said, hmm, I will follow you, but let suffer me. Suffer me means allow me to first to go and bury my father. Hello? Did his father die? If you read this place now, eh, it will sound as if the father had died. The father has not died. You know what he's trying to say? Oh my, I'm a spiritual person. In Israel, when you have a father, like the prodigal son, you remember the prodigal son, before the father died, he said, give me part of my share, right? When the father dies, you are going to inherit the father, Right? If the father has one billion dollars in the bank, it will become your own. You will share it, right? So what is telling Jesus technically is that I have a father. He has some property. 
Huh? Let me go and stay with my father first. When he dies like this, and I get my money from him, then I will come and follow you. Do you understand? He was giving Jesus a condition. This is another kind of Christian. Who want to serve Jesus, but before they serve Jesus, they want to get, they want to live, they want to do what they want to do first. This kind of person cannot follow Jesus truly. And what did Jesus say to him? Because Jesus will not take anything second. Say first, let me go and bury my father. You know what? I will go home and stay with my father. If it takes 10 years for my father to die, I will wait. After he has died and they share his property and I get my own, then I will look for you. <laughs> and I will follow you. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. The next verse. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, I chose you to go and preach the kingdom of God. But again, we didn't read that this person obeyed the Lord Jesus. Now, let's go to verse 61. Now another person ran, and another also said, I don't know what's the problem with you. Two persons now, and each of them failed to follow Jesus. The first one said, Lord, I will follow you. He said, ah, I don't have a house. I'm an itinerant preacher. I move from place to place preaching. I don't have all the money to rent to tell. Can you do it? He said, no, I cannot do it. He ran away. The second one, he said, follow me. Now he said, ah, my daddy has money. Let me bury him. Then when I get my share, I will follow you. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You, I have called you to preach. He ran away. Now this third person, let's see what he says. And I know that also, everybody read with me, want to go. And I know that also said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. He's a liar. <laughs> He's a what? Verse 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Anything that will take Jesus from you, you must kill that thing. Anything that will not allow you to love Jesus to the end, you must kill it. So God is still looking for people because this world is full of different things. God is looking for people for different reasons. Now, I just read this so you can see how people have been trying to, you know, deal with Jesus in, the, in their dealings with Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 to 9, Isaiah saw a vision of heaven. And in the midst of worship, do you know that any time we come to the church, and the choir is singing, and everybody is dancing, and we are clapping, and the Spirit of God comes down. Do you know what God is looking for? Apart from healing, deliverance, one thing God is looking for is, who can I fill with my power? Who can I use? Who can I bless to bless his or her family? Who can I make a point of contact to other people? Because many people have problems in the world. God is looking for who to use. That's one of the things he's looking for. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8 to 9, in the midst of thick worship, God said, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Now, I want to read from here. Amen? Why do God seek people? Why is God looking for people? Number one, for eternity. Everybody say eternity. Eternity. The reason why God is looking for you is because he wants to give you eternal life. If after all we do in this world, anybody here still goes to hell, eh? all you have been doing is just a waste. Amen? If after everything, anybody goes to hellfire, everything you have been doing is what? It's just a... Do you know that sometimes it's better to not to know Jesus? That you know him and go to hellfire. Because in hellfire, evil spirits will come and laugh and say, 
You say you know Jesus. Yet you cannot forgive. Then they bring one fork and put it on the head of the person. Then they will punish the person very well. He said, why, why are you beating me? Why am I the only one you are beating? What of this girl you didn't beat? I said, this one is a fornicator when she was on earth. We know she served Satan. For you, you serve Jesus. All the time you shout Jesus, you call fire on us. Huh? But now you are here. Saint, Mr. Satan will call uh, another demon. You bring that big cane. Let's flog her. When you pray at night, you stop evil spirits from working. Yes. If you are in a room and you are praying and they want to attack your boss, they can't. Because of you. You don't know. Even if it's Jesus, you are saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You wake up in the night and you are saying Jesus, Jesus for one minute. That is powerful. And the evil spirit want to enter the house. Is that one girl, one stubborn girl there is calling Jesus. Don't let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they stay outside because we are calling Jesus. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that girl is calling Jesus. Why is this girl so stubborn? She's the only one that does not allow us to operate because we are calling Jesus in the night. Now, after everything, this same person will now go to hell because one boy found you and said, Hey, you are my. You are the cockroach in my cupboard, the sugar in my tea, you are the, the tomato in my pepper soup. And both of you, you committing fornication and adultery. And then, God forbid, you go to hell. Huh? And in hell, Satan so said, ah, that's right. When I sent my evil spirit to go and punish that man, it's you that woke up in the night and was saying, Jesus, Jesus. How many times do you call Jesus? In 30 minutes, the demon will say, When we count that, it was 1,000 times. I have given 1,000 strokes on the cake. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So don't go there. Tell your friend, Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Tell somebody, Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why God looks for you. He doesn't want you to go there. Number two reason to preserve or save you. The reason why God looks for us is to preserve or to save us. Number 32, heal. Our God is a healer. Sicknesses does not praise God. Do you know the Bible says that anybody that believes in Jesus will lay their hands upon the sick and the sick will recover. What that means is that you as a person can lay your hands on yourself. Do you understand? If any part of your body is sick, you can tell that part. The Bible says, Jesus said that I will lay my hands upon the sick, they will recover. Do this part, you are sick. Now I lay my hand upon you, receive your healing. I need to be healed. Amen? Yeah. So it's not until uh, you will do seven days fasting and prayer. <clears throat> it is faith. You can fast for seven days and seven nights, and as you are praying, be healed, be healed, be healed. You have parastamol somewhere. And then you have uh, gastric uh, syrup somewhere. And you're saying, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. <laughs> and now you carry it, you Why are you punishing yourself? Amen? Amen? It's punishing, you're punishing yourself. Do you know that somebody can say, Jesus? And that Jesus that he just said eh, is coming from a death. Oh, I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that when you sing, I enter the holy of holies, I enter through the blood of the Lamb, I enter to worship you only, I enter to honor I am. But I worship you. I worship you. For your name is holy. Your name 
that one, your name. When I say your name, in my spirit, I'm talking to a person. So it's not the song. Amen? Somebody can just sing this on fire. Your name is holy. Your name is holy. It's God. No death. But well, another person, when he say your name, even that Satan, eh? the way he say name, say, ah, this person is deep. And God say, yes, what are you saying? What, what do you want? The Bible says, deep call unto deep. So the third reason why God wants to, why God is looking for you, or God, you know, is searching or calling you, is to heal. Number four, to direct. Our God is a director. Amen. Number five, to instruct, to instruct you, to tell you how to live your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are in Hong Kong now. Maybe next year God wants you to be in Huh? Canada. Australia. And maybe Canada. Australia. Maybe Singapore. Maybe in London. Yeah. Maybe Philippines. Yes. Yeah? Maybe in Oilo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, you don't know. Maybe summer. Sister Lisa, if the next if the next president of the Philippines happens to be your husband, will you not go? Of course I will go back. Will you stay in Hong Kong? <laughs> Do you know if your husband become president? By the time you are coming back to Hong Kong now. Everybody will come and stand, right? Yes. Will you come and you will go? In fact, the what's the name? The secretary of Hong Kong will want to shake your hand, right? Yes. Because you are no longer you are not ordinary person. But you see, the problem is many people don't ask God about His plan for their lives. If only everyone here can be asking God, God direct me. Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct and teach thee in the way that thou should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Psalm 32 verse 8. Another reason why God seeks you is to show forth his glory in you. God is full of glory. He has enough, but he's looking for somebody to help him show it. And that person is going to be you and me in the name of Jesus. Amen. God wants to make us a spectacle of his goodness. That's number seven. Number eight, he wants to make you a blessing to others. Number nine, he wants to rescue you from your enemies. Number ten, he wants to help you fulfill your destiny. I will go through it again. Number one, for eternity. Number two, to save and preserve you. Number three, to heal. Four, to direct. Five, to instruct. Six, to show forth his glory. Seven, to make you a symbol of his goodness or a spectacle of his goodness. Eight, to make you a blessing to others. Nine, to rescue you from your enemies. And number ten, to help you fulfill your destiny. Now, we don't have much time. I could go into examples of those that God called. For instance, God called Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, God says, Only you I have found faithful. God called David. And we see how his life ended. <clears throat> Great. Psalm 89 verse 20, God said, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. Psalm 89 verse 20. God called Matthew. He was a publican, and Jesus said unto him, follow me. And he got up and left everything and followed him. We find that in Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 to 28. Jesus called Paul on the road to Damascus. We find that in Acts chapter 9 then Acts 26, 9 to 14. But the problem is, there are people that were called by Jesus and they left him. And that is why I'm asking whether we also will follow him to the end. I give you five examples, then we pray. Number one person that followed Jesus and left him, apart from those people we have seen, is who? Judas Iscariot. Judas is Iscariot. Why did he leave Jesus? Because of money. Many people can leave Jesus because of will you be among those people? Answer me now. Will you be among them? Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus name. Number two persons that left Jesus was Demas. Demas. D-E-M-A-S. Why did he leave Jesus? Because he loved worldliness. He loved worldliness. The things of the world. 
We want to wear gold shoes, gold clothes. We want everybody to be bowing down to him. He could not endure. Number three person that left Jesus is a guy called the young ruler. He left Jesus because the young ruler, that's what he's called. He left Jesus because he had so much goods. And when Jesus said, go and sell everything you have and follow me, he could not. He wanted money. Number five person that, loved Je- that left Jesus, the Jews in John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Why do people leave Jesus? One, the flesh. The flesh. It's still raining in their lives. Number two, weaknesses that people did not deal with. Weaknesses that they did not deal with. Some people, they don't love, praise God. Some people, they don't love sexual immorality. They don't love that. But they love money. Amen? They don't love sexual immorality, but they love what? Money. You can use money to buy them. Somebody will just come and say, we want to do something, something, something. And you know what they want to do is bad. I say, hey, don't do it, don't do it. He say, shh, shh, shh. Take 200,000 or come dollars. And keep quiet. Ah, that's a lot of money. And then the Holy Spirit talks to you and say, no, don't do it. Say, Holy Spirit, please, hold on, no. Allow me, allow me. God is merciful. Are you sure you will give me 200,000? If I keep quiet, say, ah, we will give you 200,000. So they give you 200,000. And then when the police start looking and they come carry the person, we try your 200,000. <laughs> Amen. And they send the person to 10 years in prison. And then they take back the 200,000. Then he has lost. Amen. Some people leave Jesus because of money. Some leave Jesus because of selfishness. They are just selfish. Some people leave Jesus because of jealousy. Maybe you are coming to the church and you see another brethren who you started together is doing well. She's married, she has children, you know, she's doing fine. Her husband is taking care of her. And then you begin to jealous, you begin to be envious. So it's like God does not like me. If God likes me, my life too will be good like this person. So so okay, God, I hate you. And they leave. Yeah? There are people like that. I will just mention one more and then we close. Why people love uh, leave Jesus? Spiritual short-sightedness. Now, everybody look up. I want to teach you a new word if you don't know it before because I believe some of you. Do you know the meaning of myopia? Myopia. M-Y, my. M Y O P I A. You can write it. M Y O P I A. Myopia. M Y O P I A. M Y my O P I A. Myopia. You know what it means? It means short sightedness. Short sightedness. A short sighted person can see Sister Mercy because she's very close. But she cannot see Sister Susan, the birthday girl. Yeah, because she's short sighted. Now, many people that leave Jesus, they leave because what they see, they cannot see the long term plan that God has for them. Do you understand? They cannot see the great future that God has given to them. What they see is the small, small challenges that surround them. But you don't know that those challenges are meant to help you to get to where you are going. They are like Joseph from the pit. When they put Joseph in the pit, from there he went to the prison. If some people were Joseph today, in that prison they will start telling lies. They don't know that they will move from prison to the palace. Amen? Amen. They will start saying, I've been following God all these years. Now look at my life. My master's boss wants to sleep with me. I said, no, I should lie. Now I'm in the prison. Let me leave this God. Let me leave this God. Anything I want to do, I will just live my life. It's my life. Amen? And then when they call them to come before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh narrates his dream, they won't be able to interpret. 
they will not. You know why? Because the spirit of God that gives the wisdom for interpretation has left them. Do you understand? That's why some people form me. No matter what, hold on to God. He knows your hand from the beginning. And he has the best in store for you. Don't be myopic. A person who suffers from myopia is said to be myopic. You change that A to C. Myopic. So when you say someone is myopic, it means the person is short-sighted. Praise the Lord. Now I want to ask, what is it that will take Jesus from you? Give us Romans chapter 8, and then we close there. From verse 35. Who will follow Jesus to the end? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, he says? Tribulation? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness. Nakedness means when you don't have clothes. Or burial, or even the sword. They want to kill you because you are a Christ follower. 36. As it is written, for your sake, I will kill all the day long. Even if they are killing me every day, and each time they kill me, I wake up. Eh? I will continue to follow you. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now what should you do? I want everyone here to enter a covenant with Jesus. It can help you. You know what a covenant means? Agreement. So what to do? Number one, give your life to Jesus. If you are not born again, you should be born again. And that's very important. Non-negotiable. Number two, enter a covenant with Jesus. And how do you do that? You can go on your knees. You can pray and fully say, Lord Jesus, today I make a covenant with you. No matter what happens to my life, I will never go back from you. Give me the grace to follow you to the end. And you will respect the covenant. Let's stand up. That's what we are going to do right now. And then you have to be faithful to that covenant, of course. And you have to practice quick repentance. Because the Holy Spirit is not deaf and dumb. Amen? Amen. Sister Anita, look at me now. As I look, do you know that it's very easy for people to tell lies? Do you know it's easy to tell lies? Yes. It's easy, very easy. Sometimes you tell lies. So the only thing will not tell you what you said is a lie. What do you do? Don't waste time in correcting it. Huh? Yes. Correct it immediately. When you say, where do you buy your bangles? Ah, then Satan will say, tell him his original gold. <laughs> original. 20,000 on Hong Kong dollars. So that you will know you're a big girl, a big woman. And then you say, as you're looking at this girl, it's only a specimen. It's 20,000 on Hong Kong Whereas it's just 200 on Hong dollars. Or 20 dollars. <laughs> Maybe 20 dollars. Because the, you see, that lie can take a person to hell fire. That's Satan. I tell you. Of people from the Philippines call you. I said, Where are you living? He said, I'm living in the house of the queen, the biggest house in Hong Kong. <laughs> they start praising you. Hey, mama, hey, mama, hey, mama. Are you feeling big? And the Holy Spirit says, Stop lying. <laughs> Deflate the balloon. Do you understand? Please, from your heart, always seek to please God from your heart. God first. From your heart, beyond yourself. Any idea that comes to your heart, know that before that idea enters your heart, before you yourself get to know that idea and to identify the idea, God already knows it. So don't try to hide anything from God. Before that idea enters your heart, and you know, oh, I have this thought. Before you know your thoughts, God has seen your thoughts. So why are you hiding? Be sincere to him. Be clean, be plain. Don't hide. God, anytime I look at that sister, I hate her. I hate the way she talks. But God, you told me you don't want me to hate anybody. Please help me. That's a true Christian. Because God knows that you hate that person. He knows. You, you know you hate, right? Before you get to know that you hate the person, God already knows you hate the person. Mm, Do you understand? 
or a bad thought, negative thought comes to your mind. Before that thought enters your mind, and you know ah, this thought is bad, though. God already knows that thought. So why are you trying to hide? Say, ah, God, every day, I love you, Jesus. And then your heart is saying, ah. You should say, God, this thought just entered my heart. I know it is not good. Help me. You, that thought, I cast you down in Jesus' name. That's what you should do. Don't hide from God. Enter a covenant. Nothing will take me away from God. I want us to pray, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Don't let me be among those that will go away from you. Help me to be with you to the very, 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 very end. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Kado shebero soso mena kabaya. Libre soso meno koshke lebre hekadoso. Eba la katabaro shebedo koto lebre hekadoso mane koshka. Iba roso so meno no shebero soto de Kenya. Lord, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, just one minute. I've taken your time, I know. I apologize. But I believe this word has blessed you. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. If you want to kneel down, kneel down and talk to God. Lord, I make a covenant with you today. Jesus, I will never go away from you. Do that now. I hand over my life to you, Jesus. I will never go away from you. I will not love any other person, any other thing more than you. Not even myself. Not my clothes. Not my food. Not my friends. Sometimes you're supposed to come to church, your friend will say, let's go to the beach. He say, ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't want them to leave me. I want to be among them. Then you leave Jesus and you go to the beach and go and look at the water. Lord, help. I believe we are praying. Are you praying? He's with you. He wants to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you will continue to bless this word, Holy Spirit, in our hearts. And I pray that everyone who has said this word, it will not stand against them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now let's enter the second part of the service. Amen. Amen. Today, we have two services, you know. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. I'm looking for the birthday to Some people will have special gifts. You wonder where they get it from. I thank God for our life. You know, most times, maybe want, I have a program I want to do here, and I come for a Sunday because I want to enter the church. She's mostly the one that I meet. And then when we we'll do what we want to do, she will say, Pastor, leave it. I will arrange. I think almost every service, she arranged this case. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, See, the truth is this. Eh? She's taking more blessings with that thing. So let me meet I will look for your way now so that uh, only you will not be carrying all the blessings. We will be sharing. That's the secret. You will get to heaven. You know somebody had a vision and got to heaven in someone's house. The house was very beautiful and there is saw one lady. Fine. Very fine. The way she was dressed. And the man of God said, this woman, what has she done? 
Pastor, so that lady, she sweeps the church. She cleans everything. Pastor only comes and preach. Do you know that some pastors, their blessing will not be more than that of members? Not even up to. Because she's made everything, we all only come and sit down. Right? God will not forget the person that put the chair there. He's not unrighteous. So every Sunday, now think how many years she's been doing this. Huh? Maybe five years. Maybe ten years. Now, how many Sundays in one year? 52 Sundays. And now, let's say for every Sunday, God is giving her one star. Eh? For every Sunday, one star. So in the year, 52 stars. In five years, how many stars? In ten years, how many stars? Uh-huh. And then she cooks sometimes, too. I she cooks. That was his part of it. She built... Most of the groups in this church, as I know, if they want to buy something, some not all the time, but some, most times they tell her. In the morning, she will go and, and then when we want to open this place, she will come and open the place. You think it's easy? Ah, it's great. So she's gathering points, collecting points. How many of you used to play games? Games on your phone? Uh, you do as if you don't play games. Yeah, I, I play games. I'm collecting the count, bonus. Ma? I'm playing games. You play games, you receive bonus, right? Yes, sir. You receive it to be counting your score. Uh, That's how they are counting our scores. So she is a blessed person. Amen. Amen. Please stretch your hands and let's pray for her. That the Lord will not leave her alone. That our joy will be full over our lives, over our over our children and grandchildren, over everything that concerns her. Let's pray that that sharp pain in our heart will be healed. Any pain in our heart is healed. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Susan, let me tell you the truth. The only thing I think can stop you, nothing can stop you. Unforgiveness. Huh? Not, now, I'm not saying you are, you forgive people, but it's a prophecy. Watch it in anything. People will offend you. As much as you are trying, there will be offenses. In fact, from people that you love so much or you think loves you so much, they will break you. When that happens, forgive them before they offend you. Do you understand? Don't ever allow the devil to hold, make you hold anybody. Because that's the, the Bible says anyone who does not forgive, God will not forgive. So if you have one million stars in heaven, eh, and one unforgiveness is in your heart, minus no minus. heaven, no. no stars will just be there. And Jesus will be crying, say, the owner of this star now is in hell, hellfire. That will not be your portion in Jesus. Yeah. Do you understand? So just watch yourself. Don't allow anybody to push you out of the road. Let's pray for her one more. That the Lord will give her more years with sound health. Strong, sound, strong body, sound mind, in the name of Jesus. Lord will raise help us for her, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your daughter, Sister Susan. I give you all the glory. What's your surname? What's your surname? Susan Park. God, I pray that you perfect all that concerns her in the name of Jesus. Amen. As she celebrates her birthday, I know it's not actually today. I know maybe three days, maybe 31st of March or 38th of March. I pray, Lord, that everything that she needs to serve you with joy, that she needs to serve you with grace, Father, let them be released unto her in the name of Jesus. Lord, this coming this year she's entering into will be better than the rest of her lives. Her future shall be better and greater than her past. In the name of Jesus. And everyone who is saying amen, it is well with us. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. God bless you, man. We love you. We we'll rejoice with you. Please let's share the grace of fellowship with the grace, the of, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord.
forever and ever. Amen. Please, if you are doing anything for God and people don't praise you, don't worry. Okay? Just keep doing it.